Hey, Newbie Dan here. A couple of weeks ago, I stuck my thumb in the spinning blade on my table saw. Fortunately, I have a saw stop, so that means I still have my thumb. I'm going to tell you what was happening at the time, what it felt like, what it felt like emotionally, and what it took to get back up and running again, both in cost and time. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. By the way, I don't talk to the camera much anymore. I'm not very good at it. This isn't going to be the best video you've ever seen. But I thought you'd want to see my face as I was telling you what was going on. Maybe I'm mistaken and you don't want to see my face, but you're stuck with me. Um, so I have to remember what I was going to talk about. Right. So I was working on a video for the shaker style doors. If you've seen the video, you know that I made one of the panels too narrow. So what I wanted to do was cut out a strip of this wood and stick it in the in the groove here and here so that this would fit better. And it does. And I was actually shooting the video at the time. And I thought, oh heck, let me get that out of the way. And I thought, oh heck, I don't need to bother moving the camera over just for doing this. Naturally, that's when I made the mistake. But the thing is that I didn't have my mind on what I was doing. I was just thinking I could do this really quick. So I had it all set up, and don't worry, I'm not going to actually run this. Had it all set up, and I ran it through, and I cut off a small piece like this. And then I turned off the power with my left hand, and with my right hand, I reached out to get the cutoff piece. And the blade was up, let's see, wouldn't have been up any more than that. And so I turned it off, and the blade was spinning down, and I touched it with my thumb right about there. So when I touched the blade, the saw stop brake kicked in, and the blade stopped, and I had practically nothing on my thumb. And if I haven't shown you that video yet, I'll show it to you in a moment. Well, guess what? I just found out that my saw stop blade works. That's all that happened to my thumb. Even though I had shut it off, the blade was still spinning pretty fast. And I have a video clip to show you about that. Ah! Um, I'll stick it in here somewhere. Like I said, this is going to be a really fancy, well done video. So anyway, since it was spinning down, I don't actually know whether it saved my thumb. I don't think my thumb would ever have gotten cut off, even no matter what, just touching the end. I don't know how much damage I would have suffered since it was spinning down, but it was still going pretty fast, and I'm grateful I did have the saw stop. It was really kind of a surreal experience when I touched it, and I didn't even realize that I touched it. Um, I never really noticed it and noticed my thumb until a little bit afterwards. So I reached out to grab, grab the cutoff piece, and I noticed that the blade suddenly stopped. And I thought to myself, hmm, looks like I just kicked in the brake somehow. Looks like I triggered the brake. I bet I touched it with my thumb. You know, normally when you have an accident, you have a rush of adrenaline, that, that shot of adrenaline that makes you feel like you're alive and glad you're alive, or if it's too painful, not glad that you're alive. I didn't get any of that. It was, like I said, it was surreal. It's like it happened to somebody else. After I realized that I must have touched it with my thumb, I looked at my thumb and there was just a little nick on it. And then I started to feel a little in my thumb. It was just a little burning sensation, like, you know, maybe I touched a hot stove or something, but not really very bad at all. It never got bad at all. So it was all kind of, you know, not a big deal. And right after that, I grabbed my camera because, you know, I'm a YouTuber. Of course, I, I grabbed my cell phone and shot it portrait, which I always yell at people about, look, if you're going to put it on TV, you got to shoot it landscape because nobody wants those bars on the side or anything like that. So obviously I wasn't thinking completely clearly. Uh, but after I shot a, a little bit of video with the, with, the, uh, with the phone, I got another camera and shot some better footage. So let's go to that. I'm trying to get a good shot of the blade's teeth in the break, but that'll have to wait until I get it out. Oh, the blade's not moving anywhere. Actually, I don't know why I'm using this if the blade's not moving, but the blade might be salvageable. I read that somewhere. So let's see if I can get this off as one unit. Should be able to. Hmm, maybe I have to look at the manual. Okay, looks like it wants a little brute force here. Yeah. 
about this one? Well, this is going to take forever. I need to change the battery. That's better. So I do have a band-aid on, only because I cut myself on the blade trying to get it out. Oh, that's better. And I'm going to have to test all of this. Wonder what else fell out down into there. Let's see if I can get the blade off of here. So, what did it do to the Gee whiz, only nicked a few of the, the teeth. No idea how I'm going to get a picture of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is write on the saw blade. 3, 10, 19, break. So I got a brand new break. Cost me $79 plus tax. At least the packaging was easier to get into than it was getting the brake off after it fired. It says revision 2-V6. I wonder what they had to revise. Anyway, I'm lucky this will still fit on. Okay, it does fit. And it locks, so that's good. I'm gonna have to do all sorts of testing on this, but first I gotta put a new blade on it. So, this is my standard saw blade. I thought I remembered that just peeling off, but I guess not. That's interesting, they changed the color on it. Look at that. I assume it's the same blade. 50 teeth combination, yeah, it's the same blade. They changed the color on it. How much did some marketing genius get paid to change the color? Or did they just run out of that color paint? <laughs> Always like the look of new blades. They're all nice and shiny. Yeah, well that's good news. Everything fits on there. All right, teeth go in the right direction. That's always a good thing. Well, the nut still goes on, so I didn't ruin the threads taking off the old one. That feels like normal. I know I'm just going to take it off again, but let me put the riding knife back on anyway, because I don't ever want to make that mistake of not having it on. So, power it on. has to cycle through some stuff here. It's a little red and green light that flashes. Actually, the green light stays on, the red light flashes. And we got green, so I'm going to stand to the side, and I have no idea why. Okay, that's good. All right, let me turn it off again. So since I did so much mucking around here, I wanted to check the alignment of the blade, or actually the alignment of the arbor, to the miter slot. Now, I actually did this off camera, and it was out of alignment, and so I put it back in alignment. The reason why I did it off camera is because whenever I do things on camera, I've got too much focus on the camera and not enough focus on what I'm doing, and I really wanted to get this right. So let me show you the technique I used. If you see my table saw tune-up part one, this is the same technique. I've replaced the blade with a board. I know what you're going to say right at the start if you haven't seen this before, but just hang on and listen to me. I've got a line drawn down the middle here. Now, if I measure the distance here, then rotate this over and measure it here. If they're not the same, then it's out of alignment. Now you're gonna say, if you haven't seen this before, you're gonna say, well, but what if the board isn't straight? Doesn't matter if the board isn't straight. 
The board could be curved as long as you measure from the same spot on both sides, the board could be curved, but it's still going to be the same distance from the miter slot if the blade's in alignment, if the arbor's in alignment. So this works, trust me. And the reason why you use this, the reason why I use this, is with the blade, you can only measure right about here. With the board, I can measure clear out to here. It's easier to see the difference. So I've got my miter gauge, and my miter gauge always has this board on it, so I just left it there. And then here's this little jig I've got with a, a digital gauge on it, measures distance. I actually could attach this to here, but I, but I already had it on this. So I'm just gonna use this. So what you do is you get this till the pin comes right up and touches that, and touches the board, and then you wanna move it in some. So there's room right here. You don't want it all the way in, and you don't want it all the way back. If you start getting bad numbers, not consistent numbers, check to make sure that you've got this close enough to the board. Um, I did that the first time. I didn't realize I didn't have it. I just barely had it touching. That's not enough. You need to make sure that it moves in some. Clamp this to your miter gauge. And then I've got a line drawn right down the middle of the board here. It's imperative that you measure from the same spot here and over there. The surface of the board isn't smooth especially this one, because this is just a piece of junk. If you're going to do this regularly, you should probably have a board that has a nice, smooth surface. What I've done is I put the, I put the pin right on that line, and I've actually made a little mark there, too, which you probably can't see, but I've made a little mark there so that I know I've got this in the same spot on both sides. So now that it's there, I zero it, tap this, and you might see like five ten thousandths of an inch variation here, because Nothing's perfect. Then I move it over to the other side, crossing my fingers and getting it in the same spot. And this says I'm off by five ten thousandths, which is nothing. So again, try to keep that from happening. Measure over here, touch it a few times. Exact same spot on the other side. And that came out zero. So anyway, that's how I checked the alignment and everything looks good. So let me close this puppy up. And make a couple of cuts. All right. Yeah, there's no issues. Good. Everything looks good. So that's the end of the video, such as it is. I still have this saw stop, the job site saw, but as of this recording, I'm selling it. So be sure to check Facebook Marketplace, and if I don't uh, get any takers on there, I'll probably move it to Craigslist. So if you're interested, check that out. And coming soon is the video of my new saw, which is, which is another saw stop, but it's the PCS, the professional cabinet saw. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that Subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!